Good morning. Man, it was funny the other week, right? Um, when was it? Gordon Kay died a few weeks ago, wasn't it? Or a couple of months ago or whatever. And um, they had an old episode of Hello, Hello on, on, uh, on Catch Up. And I watched it. Man, <laughs> it's still quite funny, actually. But bloody hell, what a ridiculous program. It was hilarious. And apparently they sold that to the Germans as well. So it's got English people doing fr French accents in English with English people doing German French accents with an English bloke doing a doing a, a rubbish French accent accent that's meant to be English and an Italian fella in, and then you know how how do you how do you translate that into any other language anyway a little bit of that's not to do with today's video by the way. Um, if you're on, if you if you're watching, um, like, share, whatever, give us a comment so I can see who's on. Because otherwise, it doesn't tell me who's on. Anyway, um, this I wasn't going to do a video like this today. I'm going I'm to do a video on the drift at some point, but things keep coming up, and and um, this came up because of I put the procrastination video out the other day. Um, and one of the guys who's just started coming down to the park um, commented on it and, it, and it was a it was a really good comment actually. And then this morning, I put a photo out, a post out, which I'll put a link to it um, in the comments. But it was a it, it's a picture of Paul, who you, you've probably heard of, uh, rugby tots, who's lost seven stone. And I had to have him a t-shirt made. So when, so when, let's start with that. When Paul first started last May, he was 22 and a half stone. He had dangerously high blood pressure. He was on tablets, which he didn't tell me about um, because he thought I might not let him train. Um, but I've written an email about this. I'm not daft enough to to realise that, to not realise that. Is that right? Is that dumb? I'm not daft enough to not. Anyway, I realised that he's 22 and a half stone. He was... He was overweight, obese, you might say. Um, so he's probably going to have all sorts of underlying health issues. So I'm not going to beast the crap out of him, right? Because that's just not going to work. Um, so yeah, anyway. So he didn't tell us that, and that's fine. He's told me now, and he said, I've got a confession to make. He told me a while ago, he said, I've got a confession. I was like, that doesn't matter. We've got your results. It's fine. He, he was on these tablets for his dangerously high blood pressure. Um, that's now dropped loads. He's, it's back to normal. Um, you know, all sorts of things. All sorts of things are good. If you if you're watching, give us a like or um, put a comment in because I can't see who's watching otherwise. Um, yeah. So, ah, you're Steph's daughter, aren't you? Hello, welcome. <laughs> um, what was it? Oh yeah, Paul. Paul. So he's lost. Yeah. So since last May, ten months, he's lost seven stone. He's ran the half marathon. He's going to run the Bristol half marathon soon. He ran the half marathon with a with a uh, with a lung infection. Um, he was doing it for he raised like three grand for charity. He said, "See, so he's a clever lad. If he hadn't if he hadn't been doing it for charity, he would have he wouldn't have done it because you know it's it's not good running a half marathon with a lung infection. But he raised a lot of money for charity. So he had to do it. He ploughed through it. And then he's been ill since." Um, he's actually all right now. He's been come, he's he's been back this week, so like he had two weeks of being a little bit rough, and he's all right again now. Um, but then we were we were talking about it. And we said, "What do you think? Imagine this time last year if you'd have got that when he was when he had dangerously high blood pressure, probably high cholesterol and all that, and the whole works, right? Imagine what would have happened if you'd have got that this time last year. Um, how it would have floored you. You know, you might have to spend." Like a month off work or whatever, so it's it's he's got over it very quickly. Anyway, um, yeah, when he first started, he was struggling to swing a twelve kilo bell. So he's twenty two and a half stone. Imagine percentage body weight wise, how much twelve kilos is? Not a lot, and he couldn't swing it because um, he had a sore back. He had mobility issues and stuff like that. And when I got him, I had a bunch of t shirts that I give to the guys when they join up. Um, and I had them up to extra large. And I gave one to him and he brought it back. He was a bit sheepish. 
and he was a bit embarrassed, I think, and he was like, it's, it's, it's not big enough. I was like, bloody hell, so... And because it's Paul, he's a lovely guy, he contacted the bloke who I got to do my T-shirts and said, can you do me a double XL? This is how, no, this is how I found out, actually. He didn't tell me. He, 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 he emailed the guy who does, did the T-shirts for me. I've got a different guy now who's the guy, his name's Danny, and he used to work in the... Morning, Dan! See you in about an hour, mate. He used to work in the Raven, and he now um, he does. I think it's pull print. It's called. So if you need anything printing, he's your guy. Danny Lagulcha, Lagulcha, Lagulcha. He's also in a band called Dynamite Pussy Club as well. So look them up. <laughs> They're really good, actually. Very punky. Um, except they haven't got a bass player, and I'm a bass player. So you know. Anyway, I'll let them off for that. Ned's Atomic Dustbin make up for that because they've got two. So you know, the world is in order. Anyway. Um, yeah, he contacted the guy to get a double XL T-shirt. The guy then contacted me and said, "This this guy wants this. Is that all right? Because obviously it's my brand." And I said, "I'll tell you what. Do five of them because I'm you know I'm attracting big guys down there." So I said, "Do five of them. I'll pay for them." I told Paul, got my T-shirt, gave him one, um, and then he went and lost bloody seven stone, didn't he? The cheek, the cheek of it. I mean, come on. So, I had to give him another T-shirt. I had to give him a large one. Not an XL one, a large one, because he lost so much bloody weight. And then, and then this morning, we were at a session, he had this T-shirt on, it looked really baggy. I was like, which, which T-shirt is that? And he was like, oh, this is the, the double XL one. Right, because I was like, bloody hell, he's, he's lost more. Guy's gonna disappear. But he, um, yeah, he, he, it was the double XL one that he was wearing, and it was really baggy. And this was tight on him, this was tight on him. Ten, uh, 10 months ago so yeah so that was that was the post I put out a day um, I'll put a link in, in down there so you can have a look Andrew Abercrombie Abbas how are you doing my lad sorry about this week sorry you couldn't make it along you'll be along next week I hope you managed to get some did you do the stuff I put in the group for you by the way at home I hope you did good stuff that practicing your bottoms up stuff all of that caper. Oh, hang on. People are commenting on that photo that I've put out of Paul, saying, "Wow, brilliant, amazing! Look at this! Look what you've done!" Right. Anyway, so I put out another post. The other, uh, the, uh, the the video I was talking about, the procrastination video the other day, and there's another guy coming down to see me. A guy called Mark. Lovely guy. He's he's the loveliest guy you've ever met. Honestly, he's so nice. You just want to give him a big hug. Um, anyway, he, I put this post out, he's the guy who, he was a member of a gym, um, he wasn't getting the results, he didn't like it, it was intimidating for him, um, and so he cancelled his gym membership, but it cost him money to get out of it, because that's what, that's how commercial gyms work anyway, there's lots of independent gyms around which are, like, you know, which are really good, and, um, look after the customer and get them results and all that. Um, but he was a member of a big commercial gym, which, which, you know, locked him into a 12 month contract and then he didn't like it. So he's now coming along to see me. He's be, he's just joined up actually. He did the two week trial, did really well. We just did a bunch of stretching because he wasn't ready to get started swinging rates around. Um, cheers for that, Russ. Yeah, he wasn't ready to, to start swinging rates around. He's been coming for just just over two weeks, and he's now, um, you know, he's he's started swinging the weights around, doing squats, all of that sort of stuff. So he's 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 there in two weeks already. So as soon as that starts, I'm, I said, right, imagine what's going to happen in the next month. What's already happened in the two weeks is you've gone from not being able to move very well to being able to move. So now you're moving. What's going to happen in the next month? It'll snowball. It'll snowball and get better. Right. This is how it works. But I put out the video about procrastination and he commented on it. I'm going to read it out verbatim. Good word, that. That means I'm going to read it out exactly as he said it, in case you're a bit uh, um, like me and don't understand certain words. <laughs> or forget words as well. I'm getting old now. I'm 40 years old these days. So I'm like, I'll be talking away and I'll be like, oh, what's the word? What's the word? It's a simple word, like dog or something like that. Anyway. Here's what he said, right? He said, I'm going to read this. I've got it on my computer here. He said, I'm world class at procrastination. And I can find any excuse under the sun, right? This is in today's email. And then he's got, and he's, and he's, he's put his own little quotes into it. He's like, I can't go to the gym. I'm very tired. 
right? He, he was knackered when he turned up last night. When he left an hour later, he felt much better. Okay. Another one. I can't go. I can't go to the gym as I can't find a towel that you have to take. Right? Gyms have towels, right? What, what do you need? A, what do you need a towel for? What? But have a shower. Have a shower when you get home. Whatever. Right? I can't go because I don't have new tunes on my iPod to motivate me. Right? So he said this about like if he was on the treadmill and like his music would run out or whatever or he'd got to a tune that he'd already heard or whatever, he'd just be like, oh, you know, that's not motivating me. It's uh, it's not the right beat. I'll stop. That's an excuse, right? We know this. What, what stops you going? Okay. And then here's what he said about, the, about coming to my sessions, right? He said, last week I felt the same way when I was knackered. And at one point, I tried to think of an excuse why I may not be able to come. So he was already thinking, why can't I go? Why can't I go? If, he'd be, if this had been his commercial gym, he probably wouldn't have gone. He said this himself. Okay, and then I thought more about it and realised actually I enjoy the training, and I'd regret it when seven pm came around and I hadn't gone, which is exactly what would have happened last night. He turned up, he was tired. I said, "How are you doing?" He was like, "Oh, do you know what? I've had a week. I've, I'm knackered and all that." And I get that because I was like that the other day on that procrastination video, actually, which is probably why it hit, it, it it got him to to comment on it because it it. It was how he was feeling at the time. But he turned up last night. You know what? I'm knackered. Um, I, I really couldn't be bothered. Um, and then by 7 o'clock, he was like, I was like, how do you feel now? And he said, I felt great. And Carol was there. You know, he, he, he was watching as well. And he was like, this guy felt great at the end. So there you go. So he would have regretted if he didn't come along. And then the last thing he said, so I just said, no. And focused on how much I enjoyed coming along. So he's thinking like, right. I don't want to go. I don't want to go because I'm tired. I don't want to go because I'm... What, what do you say? I can't find the tower. I don't go want to go because I haven't got any new tunes on my iPod. But then he focused on actually... Hang on, I really enjoy it. I feel great at the end of it. I feel better. I feel better. I feel like I can move better. I feel like I've done something. It gives him a bit more... Oh, not self-worth. That You know, it, it makes him feel better. Put it that way. And that's what happens with, mo with with everybody who comes down. To be to be honest, there was a guy, again another guy, Steve, who turned up this morning, just feeling stiff and tired. He turned up, and everyone looked at him and was like, "You all right?" And he was like, "Oh, I'm tired this morning." Another guy, Matthew, was tired this morning as well. And then by the end of it, how are you feeling? He felt great. Steve felt a lot better, but it, it, they didn't do loads. I just said, "Right, take it easy. We'll just do some mobility. We'll do something nice and easy." And they felt better when they left. So imagine if they'd have stayed in bed and not come. You know, um, and then gone to work, feeling like shit. Imagine what the rest of the day is going to feel like. So, you know, this is this is why I'm saying the the title of this is "Do you enjoy what you do?" The title <laughs> it'll be up there is "Do you enjoy what you're doing?" Meaning anything, because if you're doing something that you're forcing, so if you're going to a gym that you don't like going to, if you're if you're doing loads of running for a half marathon, training for a half marathon, and you hate running, if you're um, if you've bought a bike and you're starting to do, I did this years ago. I bought a bike from Halfords for like two hundred and fifty quid. I'm not. Really, I, I prefer walking because um, then I don't have to get my bike out. <laughs> to be honest, and I prefer walking, which is why I'm doing this penny fan thing because I, you know, it, it'll challenge me, but it's something that I, I actually will enjoy doing. Um, do you enjoy it? If you don't enjoy it, you're going to rely on willpower. You're going to be yeah, I don't enjoy it. However, if I if I train and do a half marathon, I'm going to be fuck it. I'm going to lose loads of weight. I'm going to be super fit. Um, you know, brilliant. What happens after you've done the half marathon? You go right. I'm done. You're not though, are you? There was a thing. There was a thing I was at the weekend with my coach. Actually, it was a bit. I can't. I'm, I, I can't remember the exact. Um, quote, I think he nicked it as well. Like all quotes that people come out with are usually nicked from someone, right? And it was, um, I can't remember exactly what it was. It was something like, I've got it written down somewhere. It was something like growth comes from um, doing the, the, the necessary, often mundane things in life. It's, I'm, not, I'm not quoting this verbatim again. I'm not quoting this verbatim. But growth and success comes from doing the um, the mundane, often un uh, the necessary, often mundane things in life um, to progress or whatever it was forever. And he was like, he, he said that and he goes, "That's the most unsexy quote 
ever, right? But it's true. Because if you, if you think about it, you train for a half marathon, you do it, you stop. You put all the weight back on again. I've done it millions of times. Millions, well, seven or eight. I over-exaggerate. But I've done it a lot. Of, I did it a lot of times and I was like, oh, I feel great. Matthew Reese, I've just, just been talking about you, my lad, how you were tired this morning and then you felt great at seven o'clock when you left. I hope you're still feeling all right now as well, my lad. Let me know. If you're not, I'll give you a couple of stretches to do. Anyway, yeah. If you if you if you're relying on willpower to get you through, um, it will always run out. It will always always run out. Willpower isn't it doesn't last forever. I know this as well. It'll always run out. And then what happens when it runs out? You give up. As opposed to if you enjoy doing it. So this guy Mark, he enjoys it. He didn't. He, he said he didn't want to come. Actually, what he meant was he didn't feel like coming. But then he focused on the fact that actually, when I do turn up, I'll enjoy it. And that's pretty powerful. It means it takes willpower. Yes, fine, good, good man. Nice one, Matthew. Yeah, I was a bit worried about you this morning. Actually, you turned it. You were like, you just looked like you were you're going to leave and never come back. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm glad you're feeling good. Anyway. Um, I've had a cup of coffee sitting here for about an hour and a half actually while I was out in the park so I'm just going to mm. yeah it's a bit ropey anyway anyway yeah so um, th that's pretty much it apart from to say if you're relying on willpower to get you fitter stronger healthier or anything or um, to p get you through through work every day um, to get you through your weekends to you know just you don't know what to do so you go out and get pissed or whatever which is what I used to do if you're relying on willpower your whole time to get you through that what you either need what you need to do is either change your mindset and, en and learn to enjoy what you're doing or change what you're doing pretty simple yep was low energy first thing this morning picked up now good and this is like what three and a half hours later so yeah I'm loving that anyway Matthew's coming on um Someone's calling me, hang on, from Sweden. Matthew's um, uh, coming on Bulletproof Mindset, by the way. So if you're going to come on that, it's 8th of April. Uh, look for it in the emails. Click the link, go to the thing. Uh, Paul Marsh is on. I don't know who that is. Hello, Paul. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met you. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, Matthew's coming to Bulletproof Mindset, which is on the 8th of April, um, and that, that, this is all about learning to find what you enjoy, what to do, so it's changing your mindset so you don't rely on willpower the whole time to get through stuff, which inevitably means you give up, because willpower runs out, always. Um, people who say they're full of willpower, full of motivation, all that sort of stuff, it's like, motivation is, doesn't come from just from motivation, it comes from a thing. So think about it, if you want to be a good example for your kids, if you want a better relationship with your with your wife, if you want to be more present there and you're not thinking about work the whole time and all that, that's what that gives you that motivation. And that's always there, as opposed to getting false motivation from just saying, I want to lose weight. That's not motivation, because once you've done it, you go, what's next? What's next? Anyway, I've rambled on now. God knows how long I've gone on for. I need to have a shower and a shave. And I need to get back out there to get another three guys fitter and stronger. So, Paul Lamb, and Carol, Andy Passingham, I'll be seeing you at 12 o'clock. Get ready. That's it, I've kind of tailed off, so I'm going to go now. Ta-ta!